Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's parable reminded me of Ralphie from a Christmas story. I know what you're thinking, Christmas already? But don't worry, I won't break out in any of those catchy Christmas tunes. The parable reminded me of Ralphie because he was persistent in his quest to get the Red Rider BB gun for Christmas. When Ralphie asks his parents for this BB gun for Christmas, they laugh at him and tell him, you'll shoot your eye out. After that, he tried everything to find someone who would convince his parents to get him the BB gun. In his school paper, he writes about how he wants this BB gun for Christmas. When his teacher read his paper, she laughed at him. And then he went to see Santa Claus with his brother, and he thought for sure Santa would agree that he deserved the BB gun for Christmas and that he would bring it to him. But instead, Santa laughed at him and pushed him down a slide. At this point, Ralphie loses heart. He loses hope until he sees the Red Rider BB gun window display. With renewed hope, he proceeds to ask his parents one more time, but it was to no avail. Then, to his surprise, on Christmas morning, when he opens his presents, there it is, a Red Rider BB gun. No sooner does he pull it out than does he shoot his eye out. After shooting his eye out, he determines that his parents were right. For Ralphie, it turns out that his persistence led to him getting what he wanted. But in this case, getting what he wanted turned out to be just what he thought couldn't happen. He'd shot his eye out. His persistence led to what everyone told him would happen. And what he had denied was a possibility. Though in the parable for today, the widow's persistence brings about positive results in her life rather than unpleasant pain and suffering. Jesus tells his disciples this parable is about that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. This parable introduces the disciples to a widow who is persistent and a judge who has neither feared God nor respected man. These two characters are in opposing roles in showing the disciples why they ought to be persistent in their prayers. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. Why would the widow keep coming back? Especially since we know from verse 4 that the judge for a while refused to help the widow. The widow, being a widow, had lost her husband at some point and was now alone. As many of us know, losing loved ones is not easy. There's a period of mourning and suffering that seems as if it will not end. Then also, widows in ancient times were seen as if they were helpless. They are in need of help and they may be alone. Here, the widow in her suffering of losing her husband and being helpless has an adversary, someone who is against her. Being helpless, she needs the aid of this judge against her adversary. Then if the judge could refuse to help her, why did he give her aid? Afterward, he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect men. Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. The judge helps her out of concern for himself and frustration with her. Did he not want to, he did not want to be beat down and bothered. Though she had confidence in his position and authority, 
that he would eventually help her because he was the one that was able to do so, even if that meant that she was shameless and stepping outside of the expectations of society and causing the judge to do the same. In granting her position, her petition, in granting her petition, the judge gave her relief from her suffering and her adversary. So what does this have to do with prayer? Jesus did say that this was about praying and not losing heart. Why would he tell his disciples this? Jesus said, hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect? who cry to him day and night. Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? God will give justice to his elect. This sounds wonderful and is a great promise to his disciples here. They all have given up much to follow Christ They also will all at some time find themselves being persecuted for their faith in Christ. The disciples know and will continue to know what suffering is in their lives. To hear Christ say they will be given justice speedily meant a lot to them. Because they remembered all that he had taught them and were trusting in his promises. They dealt with the suffering in their lives. That is part of what Paul later calls the old Adam. Here the word for justice could be translated as vindication. Here this word would probably be a better translation into English as that justice falls under vindication here and that here justice is being used to show that God's elect are being exonerated from a claim against them. How would God's vindication have been done speedily? Here for the disciples, they would have seen it in the near future, in the death of Christ on the cross in his resurrection, which defeated death, the devil, and sin. In the end, Christ's work at the cross and in his resurrection makes them one with Christ for eternity. But here in this time, they still suffer under their earthly struggle with sin. Paul said in his epistle to the Romans in chapter 7, So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Just as Paul still struggles with sin, so do the other disciples, and so do we. But to Christ's disciples, this meant that God would listen to their petitions and to their prayers, and that he would help them not lose heart and stay in faith through their earthly suffering. What does this then mean for us to be persistent with God? Thinking back to high school, I can think of many times where there was suffering. Some days when the class bully was just kept reaming me and verbally and physically bothering me and the teacher just turned a blind eye to what was going on. It felt like those hours could have been going on for days, even though they were only a few hours of my life. When my grandpa died, it seemed like my family and I were stuck in this intense mourning period for years, even though it was just a short time. Granted, it still hurts, to think about the times he isn't around, especially around his favorite holiday, the celebration of New Year. Granted, he was a bit biased, being that it was also his birthday, 
But he loved the excitement of that time, the ball dropping in New York, the confetti, all that stuff. For my mom and her sisters, on that day they still look back each year and remember him by making a chicken casserole based off of his recipe. This is their earthly way of dealing with that suffering. I bet many of you can think back to a time in high school that felt like suffering went on forever, or a time that was hard because a loved one had been passed away, or was sick, or injured, or maybe it was you that was sick or not well. The suffering of this world seems to go on forever. It would be nice if we were vindicated speedily, would it not? Our suffering, which is caused by the corruption of sin, that stems from the original sin passed down from our forefather Adam, which makes us enemies with God. This suffering cannot go away from us, not on our own at least. Even though we cry out day and night, there is nothing we can ever do to relieve our suffering, our sorrow in this decaying world. No number of joyful moments, no number of casseroles, and memories. They may help to cool the pain of our suffering, but here in this world, sin traps us in our suffering. As the world decays around us, for us, vindication against death and sin could not come quick enough. Relief from suffering is something we yearn for day and night. This suffering is what Christ addressed in his words, to not lose heart. Here in our suffering is where we see what it means for us to be persistent with God. God, from the time of the fall, had a plan to reconcile his people back to him, to vindicate us from our sin. He knew that he would send his only begotten son to save us. He also knew that us being reconciled back to him would bring us a new adversary, the devil. As he said to the devil in Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. So in Christ, God vindicated us from our sin, its effects, death and suffering, and the devil. Well, how come we still suffer now? and still sin in this world. And this doesn't seem like a speedy vindication. I bet this thought may have crossed your mind. We have to look at this vindication not from our earthly perspective. In this time and in this place. But rather from that of the heavenly, the eternal perspective. See, to us, because we live in suffering for our 75 to 100 years, sometimes less, sometimes more, seems to be a long time, especially since we still suffer and die. The reality is, though, that we are really here on this earth for a short period of time, a mere few decades or so. Jesus left us with a promise at his ascension that he would return to us. This still seems far off from us, especially since it's been a couple thousand years since his death, resurrection, and ascension. This is why we are persistent, because we are suffering in this time. But like those times in high school and in grieving, it may seem like a long time, even though it is just a short time. It is because God reconciled us to himself through his son. We are able to be persistent with him and cry out day and night because he has heard our prayers. Christ has died on the cross for our sin. God has listened to our crying out day and night to our prayers. He knows it is hard for us and he does not want us to lose heart. He has provided you with the means to not lose heart. He has done so in his victory over death 
at the cross and in the hope and promise of his return. See, we have the promises that he fulfilled his promises from the Old Testament to provide his son for our atonement and our vindication. We have the hope that we are one in Christ Jesus' death and resurrection, that he paid the price for our sin and all the suffering that comes with it on the cross and in his resurrection. We are bound with him in his resurrection, his perfect vindication. We no longer have to be afraid or worry in our suffering. There is no reason for us to lose heart. Our faith is firmly grounded in God's fulfilled promise. For you, at your baptism, were baptized into Christ, and at his resurrection brought vindication speedily. And at his resurrection, you were brought to the resurrection on the last day. For you are given life everlasting of Christ the cord. For us to be persistent with God is to have faith in Christ and what he has done and unceasingly pray that he would keep his promises. Christ has vindicated us and united us to himself, allowing us to commune with him once again. In our reading for today, the widow was suffering and needed to be vindicated from her adversary, which she was not able to do on her own. So she went to the judge and was persistent, even when he ignored her. Because of her persistence, the judge helped her because he no longer wanted to be bothered or beat down. Christ tells us that this parable is about that one ought to pray and not lose heart. He also says the following about the parable. Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give vindication to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give vindication to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? From what Jesus has said, we know we do not have to lose heart. We do not lose heart because he has defeated death, sin, and the devil, and has provided us relief to our suffering, not the temporal, but rather the eternal. In so doing, he has given us hope that he will keep his promises. We cry out day and night to unceasingly pray to God because we are reconciled. We pray for God to fulfill his word in mercy by forgiving our sins through Christ. Though the hope we have in Christ will help ease our suffering here on earth, this is our vindication that Christ has united himself to us. We are baptized into Christ. And we are now united with him in his body. And we are, we are able to commune with him again. May the peace that passes all understanding guard and keep you in Christ Jesus.